What is up, everybody? It is Joe Granato from the Nest Maker Studios on this Corin Tuesday. I uh, hope everybody is safe and healthy. We are working hard on the next version of Nest Maker for you guys. We are super excited. I wanted to, uh, basically the plan right now is that we are going to be releasing a beta of the new version very soon. If you've got Nest Maker, you get it for free. If you don't have it yet, you can still sign up for uh, the current version of Nest Maker and have access to that beta. Um, and then we'll be continuing to tweak it a little bit, but you guys will get to start playing with some of these new features and get used to how it functions immediately, um, which is super exciting. So we're working on that, you know, as soon as as soon as we can. Um, I wanted to show you today one of the cool new features we're going to do. I'm going to show you a real quick version of this just to get your mind going as far as what you might be able to do with this. And you guys will probably be able to come up with ideas that I haven't even thought of. So uh, let me show you this real quick. I have this, uh, this my nice little um, caveman dude here uh, in this little dino land. I'm going to test and run and I just want to show you that it works as we would expect it uh, that it would um, I've got basic scripts that read his input make him run around up down left right um, and solid collisions so you can see my inputs down here so awesome now I looks like I missed adding that collision right there no problem in fact, yeah, I can see right there, these are tile one, which I have set to solid and null walkable, obviously. Really easy for me to change that. I can go to tile one, and so now that's the collision that's selected, and you can see with zero, I can paint that. So now that's painted and tile one. Similarly, I can actually grab um, these tiles and paint them, and they don't have any collision. I'm just grabbing straight from the tile set and drawing them in. Notice I don't have any assets here. So this is a really cool additional way that we can make spot checks. And now I can go in tile one and I can use my zero key to paint in collisions. So that's really cool. Now I can paint tiles, collisions, and attributes uh, without actually having to make new assets. That's cool enough, but that's not what I wanted to show you today. What I wanted to show you today is um, if I look at my input editor, uh, first, I'll look at my input scripts, and you can see I've got a handful of input scripts. Uh, my move scripts and my stop script are what we're going to look at right now. Uh, if I look at my input editor, it looks mostly the same. However, there are a few really important changes that are going to be really significant to you guys. First of all, I'm able to choose... I'm able to set and then choose my game state. For instance, I could have a game state that's map screen, in which case my buttons do different things, or start screen and my buttons do different things, or you know, uh, I don't know, menu screen, and that's a different game state. And when I enter into a screen that uses that game state, my inputs, I can use different scripts. Uh, for this, I'm just going to go to main game. And the other thing that I want you guys to notice is now I have both a target, which I've had, but now it works uh, specifically with my game objects as targets. You'll see this populates with this list right here. And I also have controller one, controller two. So what I went ahead and did is I made a player one and I made a player two. I made a pirate and a caveman uh, based on, uh, I didn't make these. Uh, these are created by the community. I just mean that I made the objects for them. Um, and if I look at my details, I made, you know, I gave them speed. I gave them a bounding box. I made them both player type objects. Um, this guy right here, he's going to be my player too. So he's my second game object. If I go down to my input editor, I don't even add, need to add new scripts. What I can do is now I can say main game. I want to target player two and I want to be reading controller two. When I press the right uh, D-pad button, I want to start moving right. And you'll notice when my controller two is pressed during my main game, when I press right, my player two is going to call this script. Um, and I could do the same thing for move down. I could do the same thing for move left. I could do the same thing for move up. And now I also have to do my release. So if I release right, I stop moving. If I release down, I stop moving. If I release left, I stop moving. Whoops. And if I release up, I stop moving. So you can see my movement from here to here for player one is the same as my movement for player two. But I can see controller two is affecting player two versus my controller one is affecting player. Um, and now all I have to do is go to my overworld, my screen, and I'm just going to put my, I'm going to place monster one, I'm going to make it player two. So now I've got two objects. And 
if I test my game, I'm going to go to my input so you can actually see both of those controllers. And if I press up, down, left, right, versus if I press... Oh, I must have forgotten my up and down here. Or I forgot my up, so let me go back over there. Um, let's see. Did I do up? I've got right, down, and left. Yes, I did. So if I go main game, player two, if I press up, I want to start moving up. And control it, add that script. And I'll just put that in with my movements here. Okay, so now, sorry about that. So now if I play, you'll see both of my inputs and you'll see my little dude running around. Player one, player two. Observing the collisions. So making it, uh, Making a, a two-player game is is much easier, at least to get started right now. And not only that, but but I want you to start thinking along the lines of when you're in different states, you can have the controller affect different game objects. So you could have one of these be a pointer object or a, or a frame for which object is selected. And when you when you press the button, it does something. You know, when you press a, a button on the controller, it does something. Um, there are you could have selectable objects on the screen when you press the select button with controller one, it chooses which one of the game objects gets selected and things like that. So that I, I want you to really start conceptualizing all the different possibilities uh, that you might be able to do with this. And, and I hope you're as excited about how easy that is as, as, as I am. And I can't wait to see what you guys do with, with that. So just a quick look at one of the new features in the coming version of Nest Maker. And I promise we are working as hard as we can to get it to you as soon as possible. All right, so I hope everyone's safe. Stay safe, um, and I'll talk to you guys all soon.